Hello and welcome to Stefan's Classroom. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today I'm bringing you the first episode of my Pogamath series. A series where I'm going to take a concept from either mathematics, statistics or probability theory and apply it into Pokemon TCG. Today we're going to look at the hyper geometric distribution. Let's get to it. So Let's get started with the first episode. And like I said, today we're going to be looking at the hypergeometric distribution and how we can apply it into Pokemon TCG. The first question you might ask is, what can I even use this for? And same, after been playing for 16 years myself, I've been asked many times, what is the chance of saying having a mulligan with a certain deck or starting with X number of basics, say one, two, three or more. And this is where we can use the hypergeometric distribution to calculate exactly the probability of, you know, this. So just in short, we're going to be looking at how often do I mulligan and how often do I start with exactly X number of basics. And actually there's a sub point to number two, where we can also look into if you start with exactly X number or more. So without further ado, here I would like to present to you the hypergeometric distribution. And the first look, if you don't know much statistics or anything, that looks rather scary actually. But let's just break it down and take it step by step. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will at least understand more of it than to begin with. So it takes basically four inputs. You have X, lowercase n, uppercase n, and uppercase m. And you can see here, there's these coefficients here um, that we have here, where uppercase m over X, n minus m, and so on. These things are known as binomial coefficients. And then you'll be like, but I don't know what binomial coefficients are, but then don't worry, we're gonna explain those first before we actually go into the application. There are some restrictions here. I wrote them here just for completeness, but don't mind them for now. I'm also gonna explain this a little later. However, what you need to know is, what does it tell us? It tells us the probability of X number of successes in N trials when you sample without replacement. And the most important here is the without replacement part, because when you're drawing from a deck of, say, Pokemon cards, every time you draw and you take a new trial that is a new draw after that, it's not the same population anymore. You're not putting back the card to then draw again. So when you draw your opening hands, you're drawing the first card from a 60 card deck, you're drawing the second card from a 59 card deck and so forth. And therefore it is sampling without replacement. Otherwise, we could use the binomial distribution instead of this hypergeometric one. And that's why this one is applicable for our current case. But first, let's try to look into how can we read these binomial coefficients. So again, how do we read, for instance, uppercase n over lowercase n? What it actually means is that you have the number of distinct objects n, say your deck, that could be 60 cards to begin with, and you take them at lowercase n at the time. So for instance, in the formula we're gonna be using, then you're gonna see uppercase n over lowercase n, which is gonna be 60 over seven, because you're drawing seven cards at the time. So when we take our starting hand, it's seven cards, right? Unless the rules changed since last time I played, but no, I don't think so. And we draw them from a 60 card deck. And you can actually rewrite this binomial coefficient as follows which basically means uppercase n faculty. And what does this faculty or this exclamation point actually mean? Well, in mathematics we call it faculty and the way you calculate it is simply, if you have say 60, if, first of all, it becomes a very large number, but it literally means 60 times 59 times 58 times all the way down to one. And the same for lowercase n, which will be seven in our application here, would be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So you see, these are very big numbers because these basically tells us all the possible combinations of cards that you can actually draw from your 60 card decks when you are taking seven cards at a time, which you can already just, you don't really need to know the exact number to know this number is gonna be very big. And well, to illustrate this, I've actually made a nice example. <clears throat> so suppose you wanna know in how many ways you can flip four coins and get two heads and two tails. When you, for instance, use Fury Cutter with a nice old Scyther. I know nowadays a lot of people like to make old cubes, so I took a nice old example. So we have this Scyther here, which is from Neo Discovery, number 46, and it has to attack Fury Cutter. 
which basically lets you flip four coins and for each hit, well, for each additional hit, you do more damage. So the interesting part here is to figure out, well, what, how many combinations are there from which I get two hits and two tails? And you can just apply the formula from earlier, which basically means you have four distinct objects, that's the four coin flips, and you want to know if you have two successes, how many combinations there are. So basically just inserting in the formula, we simply get six, which is, well, a very neat number. You could also just write this out because it's rather small still, but once this number gets any much bigger than this, it becomes extremely difficult. So that's an example of how we can read one of these binomial coefficients. However, we can also go one step further to make this a little easier on everyone. So I can translate this hypergeometric distribution formula into something, well, more applicable for our application. So it's the same formula. I just named them a little different. I did not rename the beginning part here because I didn't find that necessary. But basically, <clears throat> we have three binomial coefficients. The first one is the number of basics in your deck, say 10. And x being the number of successes that you want. So that is the desired amount you wish to draw slash hit in your opening hand. So in the applications later, I'm going to be showing it for say one till seven basic Pokemon, a full hand of basic Pokemon. And the second one is basically deck size minus the number of basics. So in the application we're going to be using here, I'm going to be trying with 10 basics. So that'll be a number 50 over and then cards drawn. That's seven minus how many you wish to hit. And the same goes for the one below, which is the uppercase and lowercase n, which I used in my example from before, which will be deck size over cards drawn. And now you can also see the restrictions makes a little more sense over here. So x can go from zero up to the number of cards drawn. Of course, it cannot exceed the number of cards drawn because, well, you can have more successes than the cards you draw. And x also has to be lower than or equal to the basics and cards drawn in your deck, or sorry, the basics and cards drawn minus X. <clears throat> and that also has to be lower than deck size minus basics. So, okay, that sets up how we're gonna actually use it here, but then, well, let's apply it. So suppose now I have a nice control deck with 10 basics. What is the chance that I will have a mulligan when drawing from this nice control decks? Wait a second, guys, I'm missing something on the slide, wait. Ah. Much better. Now, now I feel more like home. So carrying on, suppose you wish to use this distribution to calculate what is the chance of hitting a mulligan. Well, we insert all the numbers that we have. And basically, <clears throat> we want to have no successes. That is, we don't want to hit a single basic, actually, in the opening hand to try to calculate the chances of a mulligan. We have seven cards we draw. That is the seven that comes from here. And then we have 60 cards in the deck and we have 10 basics. Inserting all these numbers yields, well, two two decimal points because this got, does go further, 25.86%. So in a deck with 10 basics, you have 25.86% chance of hitting a mulligan. And that is the simplest application that we have of this hypergeometric distribution. And of course, we can take this further. We can, of course, just replace this number zero with say one, two, three, four, up to seven and calculate the chances for starting with X number of basics here. So for instance, I made this nice little table here and only to four decimals. <coughs> and of course here you can see that this quickly goes to a very, very low probability. Although of course, if I would extend this to further decimals, there will be a number, but we go to four decimals, otherwise these tables are gonna be incredibly large. And as we see again, we see back our 25.86% here, but we also see that the highest probability is actually starting with exactly one basic, which is 41.15%, translating this decimal number into percentages. And then we can simply see how that actually quickly, quickly goes down. We all heard about that friend or even on your own that, oh my God, I only had this number of bases, but my whole opening hand was only basic Pokemon. I'm not saying it cannot happen, it's just not very likely to happen, as you can see, because the probability is extremely low. But you know what? We can actually take this one step further. So let's go one last step. So instead of asking what is the probability of starting with X number of basics, we can change this a little to say starting with at least X basics. So again, for instance, we play 10 basic Pokemon in my deck, and then of course, we want to know what the probability was for having, say, two or more. This was very important when this guy was in a format. 
because dunks were very common back then, and then it was very important that you would construct your deck such that you most of the time would start with at least say two basics, because you also don't want to overclutter your hand with basic Pokemon. So that was very, very important at that time. And of course, note here that saying the same as at least one basic is basically the same as saying one minus the probability of mulligan, because the opposite side of having a mulligan is that you have at least one basic. So you can actually easy calculate it for at least one, which is just one minus the 25.86%, which will yield you 74.14% chance of starting with at least one basic Pokemon in your starting hand, assuming you draw seven cards, of course, and you have 10 bases in your deck. However, we can, of course, extend this to say at least two, at least three, at least four. So first of all, here's the same table as before, because, well, we can actually build it from this. So now I'm gonna change the table a little bit. So would you see the table on your left? That's the old table and the table on the right is the new table. And what it actually does, it basically just sums up all the probabilities of say hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as you can see here. If you sum up all these probabilities that are here, you get this 74.14%. And of course you will see if I would sum up all of them, I would get of course one, 100%. Similarly, if I want to start with at least two basics or more, then I would sum anything from two, three, four, up to seven, and I'll get 32.99%. And again, there is a, it is possible to have at least six or seven, but to the fourth decimal, it's a zero. If you would extend it to further decimals, yes, you will have a probability exceeding zero. Of course, it does exist. So the idea remains the same for at least three. We will sum up all these from three to seven, we will get 8.3%. And here for four up, you'll get 1.15%. And then we're going down to 0.8% and it quickly, quickly becomes, well, much, much lower. Actually becomes 0.08%, sorry for that. And this, the rest is virtually zero. At least it's very, very small. And actually that is all we can do, or that is all I'm gonna do for now with the hypergeometric distribution. So actually, what did we learn in this short video here? Well, we learned how to use the hybrid geometric distribution to calculate the probability of getting a mulligan, also the probability of starting with exactly X number of basics, and furthermore, we actually also looked at the probability of starting with at least X basics, so yay for that. I hope you enjoyed this little video here, and uh, please let me know, and then uh, until for the next episode where I'm going to look at some further applications of the hybrid geometric distribution. Hey guys, thanks for watching my first video in this uh, episode series, Pokemath. I hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment below to you know, know did, what did you like, what did you not like so much so I can try to improve my future videos. And yeah, for the rest, until next time.